Hola, ¿cómo estás? Espero que estés súper bien. This is Tamara Marie, host of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. Now, before we jump into this episode, I wanted to let you know about a special opportunity that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of, especially if your goal is to become fluent in Spanish. For a limited time only, my team is opening the doors to listeners of the podcast to take advantage of a free language coaching session. Now, in this session, it's not just we're teaching you about verbs or grammar, but we're really going to do a deep dive into what are your goals for learning Spanish, assess where you are on your journey to fluency at the moment, and help you map out a 90-day plan for how you can get to fluency. So we are going to help you take your Spanish to the next level, whether you're afraid of speaking Spanish or you just get a little bit nervous when you're talking to native speakers, or maybe you've got some of the basics down, but you really know that you struggle with getting your Spanish to flow and your listening skills aren't up to par. Whatever it is, even if it is a specific grammar issue, we will help you map out how to tackle that. And normally these sessions do cost, so we are offering a few slots for free. There are limited spaces available and they'll only be open up through the end of the month. So make sure you sign up. Go to SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach. That's SpanishConSalsa.com slash coach to book your free language coaching session where we will help you map out a 90-day plan to get to Spanish fluency. Okay, let's get started with the episode. Do you know the difference between sentir and sentirse? Or what about the verbs quedar and quedarse? Well, if you're not 100% sure what the difference is between those verbs or when you should use one or the other, make sure you stay tuned for this episode. I'll be breaking it all down for you with the lyrics to a song from a genre that I haven't really yet featured on the podcast. So listen up to find out about some Spanish verbs that are commonly confused and how you can make sure you do not mix them up. Así que vamos a empezar. Let's get started. Bienvenidos. Welcome to the Learn Spanish con Salsa podcast, the show for Spanish learners that love music, travel, and culture. Close your grammar textbooks, shut down the language apps, and open your ears to how Spanish is spoken in the real world. Let us show you how to go from beginner to bilingual. Here is your host, certified language coach, Tamara Marie. Hola, bienvenidos al episodio 104. Welcome to episode 104 of the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast. In this week's episode, we are going to dive into some verbs in Spanish that commonly get confused. And we're going to take a look at what some of those verbs are and some of those common mistakes or points of confusion with some of these Spanish verbs with the lyrics to the song Baila Esta Cumbia which is a song by Selena. But first, I am super excited to let you know that in January, I will be kicking off a goal setting series to help you plan your Spanish fluency goals for 2021. So if you're thinking that 2020 has not been the greatest year for your Spanish, or maybe it has, but you know you still have some work to do and you really want to get fluent in Spanish and you want to make 2021 that year that you make some real progress towards your goal, I invite you to join me for the challenge. Now, I'll have more details next week on how you can sign up. It's going to be completely free and I'll be walking you step by step through the process that I use for myself, for my coaching clients, and also the members of the Spanish Con Salsa community have been using within our group coaching membership of how to set effective goals that are actually going to be achieved. So we all may have gone through varying degrees or varying types of goal setting before, but we'll actually walk through some ways that you can make sure that you will finally achieve those goals in 2021 and you won't just kind of start and then stop or forget about it, uh, you know, by February, like most people do with their New Year's resolutions and goals they set in January. So we're going to tell you how to stay on track. So I'll give you all the information on how to sign up for that next week. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast and to our email list as well. So you'll be the first to know 
about the goal setting series and how you can sign up uh, for the workshop. So I have a lot of cool things that I have planned for January. So I'm super excited. I just let you know about it. So stay tuned for that next week. But if you want to be prepared in advance, if you're one of those people who likes to make sure that you can hit the ground running right away uh, when the new year starts, I encourage you to grab a copy of our bilingual planner for language learners. It has 52 weeks of beautifully color-coded activity sheets that will help you plan and track your activities week after week to make sure you stay on track in 2021. So if you want to check out the planner, go to learnspanishconsalsa.com slash planner. That's learnspanishconsalsa.com slash planner. Make sure you grab your copy before 2021. Now let's get to the topic of this week's episode. So you may have seen the Netflix series that has just come out. It's part one of the story of Selena, who is a Mexican-American artist who unfortunately passed away several years ago. Uh, And I won't spoil the story for you if you're not already familiar with her as an artist, Uh, but definitely check out the Netflix special. It really talks more about um, her life and her family and how she came to be Selena uh, and doesn't deal so much yet with some of the tragedy that happens later in her life. But I chose this song, Baila Esta Cumbia, because it's one of the songs, uh, one of the few songs really that she had that I was familiar with. As you know, this is Learn Spanish Con Salsa, so I'm not really very uh, much familiar with uh, Tejano music that's not really my thing (laughs) but this song was really more upbeat dance song and the genre is cumbia so that is actually a genre of latin music it's more of uh, folk music it really has origins in mexico colombia so there are different types of cumbia Uh, but i will include as always uh, a link in the show notes page so that you can check out Uh, the lyrics to the song as well as watch one of the live performances one of the iconic performances of selena i think it actually was her last live concert so i'll include that in the show notes page so you can check it out and you can hear the rhythm of cumbia because it all sounds um pretty much the same in terms of that background uh beat that you can dance to and there is actually a cumbia step in salsa so if you're familiar with that it's sort of like a back rock if you're familiar uh, with the cumbia step but there is actually a genre and a dance uh, that goes along with that that is a little bit different than salsa so definitely check out the show notes page learn spanish con salsa.com slash 104 that's learn spanish con salsa.com slash 104 and you can check out the video and you can also hear how cumbia sounds All right, so first what I'm going to do is break down the lyrics of the song. And again, I love the song because the lyrics are very catchy. They're very basic, so it's not very difficult to understand. So I'm going to go through that quickly. And then I'll address some of these verbs that are in the song that you may mix up with other verbs from time to time. And I'll explain it as we get into it. It'll make a lot more sense. All right, so let's start off with the first verse. And again, this song is pretty much just like one verse and the chorus. And then there's a lot of going, hey, 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 hey. So that's pretty much the song. Uh, So again, very catchy tune to dance to. But the first verse starts like this. She says, Siento algo que me mueve. Siento algo que me mueve. So that's, I feel something that moves me. And I want you to pay attention as I go through this to all of the verbs that you hear. So after I go through the lyrics, I'm actually going to go through all of the verbs. um, And I want to see if you can catch them all. So as long as you're not driving or doing something, grab a piece of paper and a pen or type it in the notes on your phone or notepad somewhere. uh, And just identify all of the verbs that you hear as I go through the lyrics. And then I'll go through it at the end and we'll see if you missed any. Okay. Siento algo que me mueve. I feel something that moves me. Un ritmo que me hace bailar. Un ritmo que me hace bailar. A rhythm that makes me dance. Tomen todos sus parejas. Tomen todos sus parejas. So that's grab your partner or get a partner. So when she's saying todos is everyone. So everyone take a partner. Todos vamos a gozar. Todos vamos a gozar. So everyone, we're all going to enjoy. So we're going to have a good time. And then the chorus, and this is the famous sort of catchy line of the song. She says, baila, 
Baila esta cumbia, which is literally just dance, dance this cumbia. So dance to this to this song. Mueve, mueve la cintura. So that's move, move uh, your waist. Now in Spanish, a lot of times when we're talking about body parts, we use the uh, definite article. So what would be the in English? So in English, we would say, you know, move your waist or move your hips or uh, grab your hand. But in, in Spanish, because it's, I guess it's known, you know, we're talking about your own body parts. They don't tend to say like my hip or your hip. They usually would just refer to it as, uh, again, with the definite article. So in this case, la cintura, it's mueve la cintura. So it's understood she's talking to you, right, as she's singing the song. So she's telling you to move your waist or really saying kind of move the whole bottom half of your body, right? Start dancing. Todos las manos en alto. Todos las manos en alto. So basically, everybody put your hands up. And again, she's saying las manos, and she's referring to the audience, and she's saying everybody put your hands up. Y griten, griten con locura. Y griten, griten con locura. So basically, and screams, basically go crazy. <laughs> so griten con locura is kind of like, you know, literally like scream with craziness, but really she's just saying go crazy and scream as loud as you want, right? And then she says again, baila, baila esta cumbia, dance, dance this cumbia, un ritmo, ritmo sin igual, un ritmo, ritmo sin igual. So this is a rhythm, a rhythm without equal. So basically there's no other cumbia like this one, <laughs> so you better dance to it. So ritmo sin igual, so it just means that there's no equal or without an equal. Nadie se quede sentado. Nadie se quede sentado. So no one should stay seated. Everybody should get up, right? Nobody should be staying in their seats right now. Todos vamos a bailar. So we're all going to dance. So that's basically the lyrics of the song. It does repeat, the verse and the chorus repeat again, but that is essentially uh, the lyrics of the song. So like I said, very basic, very straightforward. So it's a great song to listen to and to sing along with because you'll be able to pick this up very, very quickly. Now, I want to go through, like I mentioned at the beginning, I want to identify the verbs that are used in this song. So I'm going to go through the list of verbs that I identified, and we'll see if you uh, got all of them. All right. So and I'm going to use the infinitive form of the verb. So the I R A R E R form so that you can understand what the verb is. And then we'll talk about how some of them get mixed up. All right. So first I have sentir, which is to feel. Mover to move, bailar, to dance, tomar, to take, gozar, to enjoy, gritar, to scream, ir, to go, sentar, to sit, quedarse, to stay. So those are all the verbs in the song. Again, not that many, but believe it or not, some of these verbs do get confused. So the first verb that's commonly confused I have here is sentir versus sentirse. And this is an example where we have a verb sentir, which means to feel, that also has a reflexive form. So you know, anytime a verb ends in se or that se, it means that the verb is reflexive, which basically means that that action is affecting the speaker or the doer of that action. So sentirse is referring to how I feel, right? So I'm talking about myself. So that's the general idea of a reflexive verb that whoever's performing the action is also the recipient of the effect of that action. That's a way to think about it. I like to think of se as just meaning oneself, right? So how oneself feels or how you yourself feel. So that's kind of how I think about it. But again, this is one of those cases where there really isn't a huge difference in English because we would translate both sentir and sentirse is to feel. But the way that I like to think about this difference is how versus what, right? So if I'm saying sentir, I'm talking about what I feel. And when I use sentirse, I'm talking about how I feel. And I'll give you some examples. And hopefully that'll make it a little bit clearer. So in the song, she says, siento algo que me mueve. So I feel something that moves me. So the key here, the reason why it's not me siento algo, because she's talking about something really that's external to her, right? But it's a thing. 
algo. It's just something. We don't really know what it is. <laughs> it's something that's coming from the music, obviously, in this case. But she's just saying, I feel something. And an easy way to think about this is, if I'm talking about a what, then I'm feeling something that's a noun or a sustantivo. So, siento algo, I feel something, right? I could also say, siento alegría. Siento alegría, I feel joy. So joy in and of itself, right? It's not an adjective, it's a, it's a noun. So it's something that I'm feeling. So that's one way that you can think about the difference between sentir and sentirse. Another example with sentir, I could say, I feel that or I feel like something. So for example, siento que deberías saberlo. Siento que deberías saberlo. So I feel like you should know. So if I say that siento que, you know, I'm, I'm saying I feel that. I feel something. Again, I'm talking about a thing that I'm feeling. Now, to contrast that, sentirse is how I feel. So I could say, me siento bien. I feel good. I could say, me siento genial. I feel great. Or I can say, me siento nerviosa. I feel nervous. So those are just some ways, uh, hopefully, can help you differentiate between sentir and sentirse. But in the song, she's just using sentir because she's saying siento algo, so I feel something. Another verb used in this song that actually is a reflexive verb that can get confused with its non-reflexive form is the verb quedarse. So we have quedar and we have quedarse. Now the difference between these two is that quedar means to remain or basically what's left over, what remains, and quedarse means to stay all right so some examples hopefully that will clear this up i could say aún quedan dos horas de fiesta aún quedan dos horas de fiesta so there are still two hours left in the party so again i'm referring to those dos horas dos horas quedan so there's two hours left or two hours remaining in la fiesta Contrast that to quedarse, which means to stay. And that's usually talking about a person. So for instance, if I say, me quedo en casa, I'm saying, I'm staying at home. So me quedo, again, that's the reflexive conjugation, me quedo en casa. Or if I wanted to say, we're staying here, I could say, nos quedamos aquí. Nos quedamos aquí. Now in the song, the example is, Nadie se quede sentado. Nadie se quede sentado. So no one stays seated, right? Because everyone's going to get up and dance. So this se quede, me quedo, nos quedamos, te quedas. Those are all reflexive forms of the verb quedar. And also this example, nadie se quede sentado, also has another feature that I want to discuss about how verbs can sometimes get confused. And this is the conjugation of the command tense or mandatos versus el subjuntivo or the subjunctive tense. And the reason this occurs is because some of the conjugations for the command tense and subjunctive are actually the same. So for example, nadie se quede sentado, that is actually a command. She's basically saying no one stays seated. And the reason that we know that is because it is quede and not queda. Okay, so quedar is a verb that ends in AR or AR. And when it becomes subjunctive or a mandato, the A at the end changes to an E. So instead of se queda, it becomes se quede. And the reason why we know that this is the mandato or command tense and not the subjunctive is because of the context. And I'll explain a little bit about how we know that. So looking at the song earlier, she says, baila esta cumbia. So dance this cumbia. So she's basically commanding you to dance. <laughs> and we know that because she's talking to us directly. This is a song and she's talking to our audience. So baila esta cumbia. And then she says, mueve la cintura. Mueve la cintura. And again, that's the command tense of the verb mover. And we know that because again, she's addressing us as her audience, but she is using the tu form. So she's talking to one person directly in these first two parts. And now those two examples, baila, mueve, are really straightforward. It's clear that those are the tu form of the mandato and not a subjuntivo. 
Uh, but it gets a little bit trickier when you have nadie se quede, because in this case, that does match the conjugation for usted, el, ella. Okay, so the conjugation for the subjunctive and the command tense is actually the same. But again, in context, she's already giving us commands. Dance this cumbia, move your hips, move your waist, right? So then she says, nadie se quede sentado. So we know that it's a command. Now, my next example of a few verbs in the song that could be confused between the command tense and the subjunctive is the verb tomar and gritar. So she says, tomen todos su pareja. So she's basically telling everyone to grab their partner or to take a partner, so someone that they can dance with, right? But she says, tomen. And also the verb gritar, it's very obvious again that this is either the subjunctive or command tense because that AR ending in gritar has actually changed to E. So it becomes griten. Griten con locura. So she's telling everybody to scream, just go crazy screaming, right? But this tomen, griten, it's very clear that these are the mandato because again, in context, she's been giving uh, these commands throughout the song. But in this case, it has switched to the ustedes form. So she's gone from talking to you individually to talking to a group. So tomen todo. So everybody take a partner. Everyone grab a partner. Griten con locura. So she's talking to the whole audience. Everyone scream. So remember ustedes is the you form as well, but it's plural. So she's switching it up a little bit, but basically the idea is the same. Uh, the song, she's giving these, uh, these commands and she's telling you what to do. Now, if she was to say, quiero que ustedes griten, right? I want you all to scream, then it would be the subjunctive. So the subjunctive is used to express desire. But in this case, um, it's clear that it's a command tense based on the context of the song. And my fourth and final example of a verb that you could possibly get mixed up if you're not sure of the context is sentarse versus sentirse. Now, I know we already talked about sentirse and sentir earlier in this episode, but sometimes people get sentirse confused with sentarse. Now, they're both reflexive verbs. Uh, sentirse means to feel and sentarse means to sit. And the reason why these two get confused is because the yo form is actually the same for both verbs. So I could say me siento bien, like I said earlier, I feel well or I feel good. And then it's very clear that I'm using the verb sentirse because I'm talking about emotions and how I'm feeling. But what if I was to say, me siento en la mesa? You might be thinking, why does she have feelings for the table? Or <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? But when I'm saying me siento en la mesa, it's clear from the context that I'm saying I sit at the table, where I'm sitting at the table. So, me siento en la mesa, again, from the context, we can tell that it's the verb sentarse. So, it's only in that yo form that they're the same, uh, but sometimes that can get confusing uh, if you're used to using one versus the other, and then you go, wait a minute, am I, am I saying this right? Me siento, me siento. <laughs> it's actually the same, uh, and it is, both of them are reflexive verbs, and they can get mixed up in that I form in Spanish. So hopefully you found uh, this useful. Hopefully I didn't confuse you further. <laughs> but again, make sure you check out the show notes page, learnspanishconsalsa.com slash 104 to get the lyrics of the song and to watch the video of the performance. And don't forget, if you want to participate in our goal setting challenge at the beginning of 2021, we are going to kick off the year with a special series on the podcast. We'll be going through how you can plan successful goals in 2021 so that you can finally reach Spanish fluency. I'm super excited to go through this with you because it really is the key to getting to fluency. But if you want to be prepared for our goal setting workshop, I suggest that you grab your copy of our bilingual language learning planner. It has 52 weeks of beautifully color-coded activity pages, 
that you can use to track your goals and all of the activities that you're doing to reach them throughout the year. And you'll want to order it pretty quickly because I want to make sure you get it before the new year. And right now I know some of the mail delivery services are getting behind because of all of the holiday shopping that's going on. There's a lot of shipping going on right now. So I really encourage you if you want to be ready to hit the ground running in the beginning of January that you make sure you order your copy of the planner. Now, just go to learnspanishconsalsa.com slash planner and you can grab your copy and we can make sure we ship it out to you so that you will be ready to start 2021 on the right track to fluency. That is it for this episode of Learn Spanish Con Salsa. As always, I hope that something you heard today has helped you go one step closer from beginner to bilingual. Hasta la próxima. Thank you for listening to the Learn Spanish Con Salsa podcast at LearnSpanishConSalsa.com. 